it's all about taking the substance of one idea and putting it into another form. I mean, it, it's essentially alchemy. I mean, it is a form of alchemy. Uh, so that's why he wants us to actually get his stuff down to the point that we're memorizing it all. And at the Prohibition of Grade, it's Libra 65, and that's because that's the end point of the Outer College. It's about the adept's relations with his Holy Guardian Angel, so it's another statement of direction. When we start off with this, we want to know where is this going. And Crowley is very, very clear about that. Um, at the Neophyte Grade, it's Libra 7, which is more of a statement of uh, the words of the Master of the Temple. And that's, uh, and that's because, and that's another preparation. Like I said, Crowley identified two major crises, and those are the two major crises. So at the first introductory grades, he wants you to get a sense of what those crises are gonna be and how you're going to wind up approaching them. And after that, we have a few books for the Zelda grade. That's, uh, Zelda grade is when you get the book of the law. Uh, so that's interesting, I think, that Crowley would want his uh, initiates to go through Libra 65 and Libra 7, which he considered to be you know, very important, but certainly not as important as the Book of the Law, which is central. But uh, they're not asked to study it to the extent of reciting chapter. I mean, he expects you to study it. Uh, during the student phase, he expects people to cover the books on the AA reading list. And so that's important. And I think it is important to use the actual books on the list. Uh, very few of them are difficult to obtain uh, at this point. Uh, but he also asks you to look at um, Lieber HHH, which is the beginning of using the astral work that is uh, comes up in the uh, in the neophyte grade. HHH is a series of will will meditations that aren't just looking at um, elements or planets. It's actually going through a process, a sort of dramatic process in your mind. But it's not like a, a ceremonial magical ritual where you have certain actions. You're supposed to be able to picture these things, sense these ideas, and get to the extent where you can feel yourself actually going through the experience that's sort of outlined in this wheel meditation. Uh, also, the Zelda grade is significant. I think it's significant that uh, that Crowley would put uh, put the Book of the Law at this for this reason, because after initiation into the Practice grade, uh, it becomes it's recommended essentially not to leave the AA until one has equilibrated oneself again, because it's the first departure from the Tree of Life. Uh, Zelda is attributed to Hesod, and uh, the Practice is attributed to uh, Hod. So then. You're basically going off center, so he wants you to go th back to the other side to reestablish a balance before you risk leaving because he says that it could be terrible. And I don't know about that, but I will take his word for it. Certainly. It could be terrible. Well, it would basically, <laughs> it would basically mean a complete loss of equilibration and balance. So, I mean, to become unbalanced, interpret that how you like. It would depend what trajectory you're heading on when you became unbalanced. but. It's kind of like staying in the same grade for years and years and kind of be the same thing. Like, yeah, but that can stay. happen though. I mean, Crowley actually does caution us that, you know, every little aspect of the grade has to be completed. He says someone could have a total mastery of ceremonial magic, but if they can't sit still for an hour, they don't get past the Zelda grade because they can't pass examinations in Libra E. So maybe they are very talented and very uh, uh, powerful even, but still they'll never get past that point of the AA system unless they're capable of accomplishing that task. Um, I'm not sure if that's why people actually do it, though, in, uh, in actual orders right now. Um, at the practice grade, there's another bunch of books. Uh, Libra Trigrammaton is interesting. It's not one of the ones that uh, people talk about a lot. Uh, it's where Crowley goes into his Yi King stuff, and I don't think the Yi King is that popular among at least occultists around here. But um, it's interesting that he uses a, he has a very simple visual method of three lines with broken lines and solid lines and associates those with a couple of poetic statements to essentially understand how being comes into becoming and whatnot. Uh, the practice grade is significant because it is the intellectual sort of grade. It's where you study the Kabbalah and memorize 777 and you're, it, it, it's, it's where you kind of like there's the most intellectual work, rational work. There's, a, there's more exams there, and uh, you're expected to equilibrate your intelligence with action at the same time. So that's, uh, that's that side of it, which is the balance of the philosophers, which is more like the emotional side. That's where you practice bhakti yoga. Uh, that's where you learn uh, talismans and evocation and how to sort of focus yourself. And the first two chapters of Lever 3 go to the practicus for word and the philosophers for action. So 
that's when you're well. You, and once I should emphasize when I'm when I'm saying this as I'm going through this, um, just because a person will get a book at a certain time or be asked to be examined, ex be examined at a practice at a certain time, does not necessarily mean that uh, they wouldn't have done it before. In fact, that's what makes the probationary period so significant. If a person really puts their effort into it and does all the practices during that time, then they'll easily be able to pass examinations in those practices later on and probably very mo quickly move through that at a college. Uh, whereas someone who kind of like waits until they're absolutely forced to get into something and figure something out is not going to move up very far. Uh, Crowley does have an initiation ritual for those people in the Zelda grade, um, uh, I think it's Libra 27, uh, where there is a formal dramatic initiation, which doesn't really, doesn't really play into the two lower grades. It's pretty much being able to pass exams and being able to demonstrate your record, and that's about it. Uh, but he says for people who are particularly like, difficult to kick out of their slumber, and a big formal initiatory ceremony is, is recommended. And, uh, you know, and different people will work different ways with that. Some people react very well to things like that. Some people are, you know, will prefer to just do their own work and do their own thing, and it's fine, absolutely. Uh, just as self-initiation is something that Crowley himself has recommended and provides a formula for. So he's, he's, he, he, does, he doesn't expect someone to... The big, the big thing about the AA is that it's not supposed to be... Um, it's not, Crowley saw a lot of problems with the Golden Dawn in terms of its social factor and the way initiates interacted with each other and how it could have kind of became like a club where people were hanging out. And he felt that took away from the teaching aspect of it. So he wanted to keep that, those things separate. And well, someone should do their work on their own and they're just providing their record, basically. Um, where are we? Okay, yeah, uh, the philosophers, I should finish that thought, is uh, where uh, initiators is expected to have fully comprehended the nature of their initiation. Uh, that's where they kind of know, where they understand what has happened to them from the probation period until that point of, uh, of initiation, which prepares them for the Dominus Limnus uh, grade, which is sort of a, a midpoint between because it's back to the middle pillar, but it's like a midpoint between that and Adeptus Minor. It's where someone is expected to do a couple of things before they're, adept, uh, before they're initiated into Adeptus Minor, but it's also kind of a last chance to get out. <laughs> uh, if someone does want to leave, then, then they've reharmonized everything, they've, ba they've balanced their intellect and their emotions, they've come to some kind of idea about where they're going, and now it's their choice, basically. Uh, and that's where someone is judged in their knowledge and power and expected to, and I quote, learn their place in the temple of initiation. The word temple is significant here because uh, master of the temple comes up later on and this is where you're, this is where you are essentially learning your place in the place that you are expected to be in complete control over after crossing the abyss. So uh, as a preface to the HGA experience, it basically uh, is a test to see whether one is suitable to have that experience that will put them on the trajectory to cross the abyss and, uh, and actually achieve that. And, and, and it could be also just a way to save someone from becoming a black brother and having their magical energy sucked away. The Adeptus Minor grade on the outside of, uh, on the outside in the outer college is uh, just about the Holy Guardian Angel essentially. And this is where things get interesting. Like you are expected to have learned all these different things, memorized all these different things, had attainments in all these different practices, and uh, now the HGA ritual will be will be a ritual devised by the practitioner, designed to reflect all of that knowledge and all of that understanding. And it is.